Get to the church blind! Get to the church blind! Go! Now! I'm Pete Mitchell, and he's Peyton Jones, and you're listening to Hardcore Church Planning, the companion podcast for the Church Planner Podcast and Church Planner Magazine. Each week, we'll bring you interviews from planners who are in the trenches making it happen right now. These active church planners bear it all, share their successes, their failures, and what they'd wish they'd known when they were first starting out. Listen in to discover how God is working in their church plan. Hey, church planner, this is Peyton Jones. You are on this week's episode of Hardcore Church Planning. Now, I have to say, we, uh, we have some cool topics and some cool people. We have a really cool topic today, one of my favorite topics, which is films and movies. And those of you that have been with Hardcore and Church Planner Magazine podcast for a long time, you will know that uh, my co-host was a film major in Biola. That was really because he didn't want to study anything serious. And check it out, he's making tons of money now. So uh, go figure. But my guest today is Josh Larson. He is the co-host of Film Spotting and the author of a new book called Movies Are Prayers and How Films Voice Our Deepest Longing. So Josh, welcome on to the podcast. Thank you, Peyton. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man. Well, I'm really excited to jump into this topic. But before we do, we always like to kind of hear a little bit about you, our guest, and what your journey was to faith. Yeah, I've got a a boring story for you, I'm afraid. You know, born in a Christian family and uh, raised in a Christian home, raised even while attending Christian schools from K through college. Uh, so I don't really have a dramatic narrative to share. I can't even really say that I'm one of those church kids who rebelled and then came back and <laughs> give you that sort of story either. It was uh, a very supportive uh, home and Christian environment that I was raised in. Even though I grew up during the culture wars, we were um, somewhat removed from that being a part of this reform tradition Uh, Dutch reform tradition specifically that had a little bit different view of culture and God's (laughs) sovereignty over it than maybe what, um, you know, what a lot of the headlines of that era depicted Christians as believing. So, so I've been really blessed with that sort of support. I have to come in here because I have, um, there's a guy from the Dutch reform tradition, a guy named Joel Beakey. And he used to come to Wales where I was a missionary for 12 years. And he used to talk about how the Puritans were the most amazing illustrators of anything. Like they could just pick something out of nature. You know, Charles Spurgeon has this famous uh, book called Sermons in Candles, where Mm -hmm. he told his preachers, hey, you should be able to look at that candle on the table and get a, a you know, a hundred illustrations. Yeah. It. Yeah. And they, they moaned in any, and so he rattled off a hundred and then he said, okay, your homework assignment is to find a hundred more unique illustrations, which they moaned again. And the next day they came, you know, with like maybe 10 each and he rattled off a hundred more and said, now when you're, when you're really good at illustrating, you'll be a good preacher. Well, so I have this theory that ironically, the Puritans would have been the best users of movie illustrations on the planet. They Maybe so. <laughs> a couple hundred years too soon. So, right, yeah. So, so, Josh, tell us a little bit about, first off, tell us what is film spotting? So film spotting is sort of a side gig I do. My main job is as editor of Think Christian, which is a faith and culture website. But on the side, I've uh, been able to, for about six years now, be a co-host to a podcast that actually started before me in around 2005 by Adam Kempinar. So he was the uh, original Um, founder, and also he's still uh, the other co-host and the producer of the program. And it is a podcast. We also air on Chicago's NPR affiliate, WBEZ. And it has been a wonderful way for me to keep one foot in the mainstream media world, which is actually where my career began. And I spent Uh, the majority of my career before coming over to Think Christian. So it allows me to be in both places every day where we're speaking to a mainstream audience 
on Film Spotting. We do, it's a weekly show and we do a review. We do these top five lists um, just about every week and have some other fun things as well. And uh, so I get to speak to a mainstream audience there and, and then get to do uh, during the day, most of my work, during the day, most of my work with Think Christian, speaking to largely culturally engaged Christians about faith and culture. So I have to say, Think Christian is one of my favorite blogs. So my, oh, really? My worlds just collided. You That's fantastic. Started, you guys did a Star Wars run. Uh, that's recently. that's right. Yes. Was that you, Josh? Uh, well, I organized it and wrote a few of the pieces, but we also brought in some of the best writers on movies and theology who write for us on other topics, but we also were aware of from other outlets. And that was a, such a fun package to do in anticipation of Star Wars Episode Seven. of course, Force Awakens is when we put that together. Yeah. And we just looked at all of the previous Star Wars films and through a theological lens, as we do on Think Christian uh, all the time, and put that together as a package, got some fantastic original art from mm -hmm. designer Skylar Roseboom, who, boy, that really helped sell it. People immediately gravitated towards that art. Right. And I'll tell you, we're still finding new people. Of course, with Rogue One, there's still interest in Star Wars, and we're finding new people uh, through that package every day. So that's been a real blessing for us. Well, you know, and that's when I found you. That is how I found you. Oh, okay. You. Great. So, it's funny. I did not know coming into this that that was you, that you were connected with that. So yep. you know, go, go figure. But, but here's the cool thing is, um, guys, Think Christian is an amazing blog for sure. Just this wasn't planned, but for sure check that out. And one of the reasons why uh, we wanted to interview you, Josh, was because um, church planners are always having to culturally engage. We are, I, all Christians are supposed to be missionaries, but church planners find themselves particularly in that unique place of, if they're doing it right and they're doing it biblically, they're building churches or planting them with unchurched people. That's mm -hmm. what it's for. And so when I th this came very graphically clear to me when I went to the UK back in 1999. And I went to this guy, his name was Martin Lloyd-Jones. He was a, a famous preacher and I was asked to be the evangelist at the church. And I was like, well, what does an evangelist do? And they said, well, it's pretty simple. You talk to people who don't know God about knowing God. And so I thought, well, man, how am I going to do this? Because the, the, the Welsh in particular were so biblically illiterate hmm. and the matrix had just come out. So when I tell you that, Josh, it's like the population was 0.30% evangelical, Okay, 4% um, church. Now that could be mosque, that could be Buddhist temple, that could be church of England, could be anything. But when you have a third of a percent that actually believes the Bible's true, um, you know, you're, you're up against some hard stuff. And yes. so, you know, we were like, you know, and all of a sudden the matrix came out and I was, I was just finding as I was talking to people, I'd say, well, you've seen the matrix, right? And people would immediately connect. Yes. And I went, man, you know what? This, I, I can communicate through films. Like these people have no idea who Moses is, no idea about Jesus. I mean, the, the only thing they know of Jesus is South Park. Literally that is about the extent of their <laughs> And so I was like, man, this is incredible. So films started becoming my greatest allies and I'm, I'm segueing. I'm going to, I'm going to get you talking about the book in a second, but I'll never forget. I went to a church and they invited a ton of lost people and it was a somewhat traditional church. And I remember I preached something about, you know, the cross. And I mentioned Indiana Jones and the Ark of the Covenant to illustrate something. I think it was what atonement was. Okay. And just using that word, you know, that film just right there, you know, that box thing where all the, all the boogeymen come out of, I said, that's what I'm talking about. Afterwards, someone took me aside and said, you know, and th this is mind blowing to Americans, but to, to the Brits, not so much. But somebody said, you know, um, the fact that you just mentioned um, uh, a Hollywood blockbuster would have been very offensive to many people in here. And of course, it was an older congregation. I just looked at the guy and said, I wasn't talking to them. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was talking 
to everybody else who has mm-hmm. applied it. And, and, and I just remember it saved me so much time, but there was such a connector. So I want well, to, it's a common yeah. language, right? I mean, it's our, the, the most popular global common language, the movies serve that function. So yes, absolutely helpful as a, a way to bridge that gap. So tell us now the book is called uh, films our prayer or movies, our prayers, how films voice our deepest longing movies are prayers go. What does that mean? <laughs> well, I think those who have been thinking about movies theologically for a while now are fairly familiar with the idea that God can communicate through movies to us. And sometimes in ways that the filmmakers don't intend. And that has certainly been a rich way to think about movies for me Uh, This is a a little bit flipping that idea so that we're looking at movies and asking, how are these perhaps communicating to God? And I made that flip as a film critic because film criticism is something I've been practicing for a long time. I wanted to do it since I was a kid and started doing it shortly after college, but mostly in mainstream media, as I mentioned. So the idea of how to bring theology into our film viewing was something that was kind of new to me. I had done the whole thing of how might God speak to us, as I mentioned. Uh, But the more I worked as a film critic and paid attention to the, the text of the movies themselves, the choices the filmmakers made, things like camera work, and editing and performances and cinematography, uh, I thought maybe it would be interesting to start there with what the movie is doing rather than start with, say, a biblical message that might parallel the movie. Do you see the distinction I'm making? Absolutely. It's not to say one is better than the other. It's just a different approach. So if we start with the text of the movie, suddenly I was seeing how these really are, and it's, you know, not that mind-blowing of an idea because all art expresses how the creator of that art feels about the world. What is this place? Mm. Why am I here trying to make some sense of the world? Well, that's what a lot of prayers do. And certainly Christian prayer can be supported by liturgy and we have a long tradition of that and that is very good and we absolutely need that but christian prayer is also something that happens instinctually that happens as we're just walking down the street <clears throat> and excuse me and i found that movies often operate that way and at the same time once you start breaking it down really function in the way a lot of biblical models of prayer do. So whether those are prayers of praise or prayers of lament or prayers of confession or prayers pledging obedience, suddenly I could see how films functioned in those ways as well. And and I'm speaking, I spend probably 95% of the time in the book on films that would be considered secular. So these aren't, um, you know, chariots of fire. I'm not really looking at. Uh, These are secular films that because they are expressions of human wonderment, echo the same sorts of ways prayers express humans wanting to communicate with God. That's fascinating because I, I, I would imagine that you're right. For people who don't know how to pray, how do they pray? I mean, even music, right? You could, you could go to so many different sure, parts, but, but the idea that you're saying that it makes sense out of the world um, that's really powerful, man. I've, I've never really thought about it from that angle. Um, t- tell me a little bit about how you unpack the book and what are some of the, the big observations that you, you make in it? Well, I sort of start by making this argument that we can see movies as prayers. And again, they don't have to be coming from someone who proclaims to be a believer in Jesus. I, you know, I, I think an atheist howl against God, God still hears that. <laughs> we, we as believers understand that uh, the atheist is maybe ranting against a God he or she doesn't believe in, but the God we believe in hears that. And so it's interesting to examine movies like that as those sorts of prayers. And so I have a chapter that's devoted to prayers of anger and looks at films like, say, Fight Club uh, that may function in that way. Or I open that chapter with Rebel Without a Cause, the James Dean classic, which is very much about 
anger and ask the real, you know, the difficult question of, can we pray in anger? Should we pray in anger? And we all do. I think that's a confession we have to make. But um, somehow looking at movies and how they are praying in anger helps us to work through that process. So yeah, once I've made that basic argument that uh, all of these different movies can function as prayers, then I do devote a chapter to about nine different types of prayers, some of which I've mentioned, and just explore them in detail. Again, returning to the form of the film, I think Christians can spend a lot of time concerning themselves with the message or theme of a film and then getting sidetracked perhaps on whether or not they agree with that message or theme or how it aligns with biblical themes. Um, So I wanted to go back to the form of the film and discuss how it evidences that these movies are working as prayers. And I do that with those nine chapters, uh, again, in those different forms of prayer. All right. So here's, here's the big question then, because that, that is awesome. Um, this, this is a book. It comes out in June. I cannot wait to read it. Um, again, being, being familiar now, as of this year with Think Christian, mm-hmm. uh, the way you guys are truly, you're intelligent. It, it doesn't surprise me that you guys are film critics. Give me, give me some, so you mentioned Fight Club. Um, you can use Fight Club, but give me an example of a film and how what you just said is true. How does that come out of you know whatever film that that you're talking about? How it might how it might function as prayer? Well, maybe maybe we can go back to one that's uh, closer to your heart, maybe, and talk about the Star Wars films. Does that mm-hmm. sound good? Um, well, you know, it, in every not this podcast, but on my other podcast, eventually we end up talking about Star Wars every episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know that. So I figured this would be one you'd, you'd like to hear about. So the Star Wars, the whole franchise, I looked at and considered as uh, prayers of obedience. You see a lot of gestures, again, going back to the form of film, of obedience throughout the franchise. I'm thinking of something like the way Luke carries Yoda on his back in Empire Strikes Back, right? He's submitting himself to obedience. And we can even dig a more, a little bit more deeply into the theology and ask, what does Christian obedience mean? And I think we'd probably agree that it doesn't just mean following God's rules because he told us to. It looks at the rules as God's response to our brokenness and saying, here are ways that you can flourish if you're willing to set aside your sinful instincts and follow these ways I've given you, they will lead to human flourishing. So that's one motive Christians have for obeying. Another motive is thankfulness for what Christ has done for us, right? That is an expression. It's something we can give in response to Christ's work is our obedience to God. And so to get back to Star Wars, it's very interesting to see how the characters respond to the Force in these films, whether they see it in the case to go to Force Awakens of Kylo Ren as something to be grasped for his own power and bent and how that doesn't quite work, or the Rey character who really doesn't come into full fruition of the Force until she gives herself over to it. That's kind of the the character arc she has in that film, right? That she discovers she has the power of the force, resists it at first, but then is willing to sacrifice, give in, to obey in a proper way, unlike Kylo Ren, to what the force requires of her. And there's that one scene, that interrogation scene in The Force Awakens between them, where this is acted out beautifully, where Kylo mm-hmm. Ren is trying to use the force against her. Again, it's it's this gesture. He's trying to Um, actually force her to do something against her will, and yet she is able to resist. And then once she does agree to obey where the force leads her, she flourishes at the end of that film, as we see in their other confrontation Mm -hmm. when they have their duel. Wow. See, now you're speaking my love language. (laughs) I figured you'd like that one. (laughs) Well, you know, I like everything you've said so far, and it it really makes sense. I'm one of those guys where I, I do find God speaking to me through film. Um, I, you know, again, going back to the Puritans who were hundreds of years before their time, because I think now people like yourself, and um, even though this isn't necessarily talked about in mainstream, um, I think we're a little beyond the days where people used to pretend like they never watch films or listen to, you know, devil music or whatever. I think mm-hmm. now 
pastors are beginning to incorporate culture more and more. They're, they're taking more of the Mars Hill approach, like even one of your own prophets have said. And that's what I really, when I look at Think Christian and I'm watching you guys, you're, you're, you're interacting with everything to see, you know, kind of like, hey, the master has need of this donkey. But even, even beyond using media as a tool, what I hear you saying is this is this is part of the human expression. This is part of the all of us are spiritual beings, and we're and so when someone's making a film, it is like an expression of prayer. And yeah, I, I think I think you're absolutely right, Peyton. I mean, we're we're also cultural beings more so now than ever. And while there are Christian groups who still remove themselves from the world as much as they can for good and faithful reasons. I think the reality is, especially when you're looking at North American Christian culture is we have shifted over to almost complacent consumption of culture. We've gone away from the demonizing of culture in a lot of ways to we're just swimming in it because we have no choice. Right. Mm. And so I'm glad that you pick up on think Christian purposefully trying to speak to those people and say, listen, there's not as big of a gap between Sunday and Monday through Saturday as you might think or might be practicing. Um, There are more Christians who are going to movies and it's just entertainment, you know, or they're watching television shows or listening to music and it's just entertainment. And, And we're not arguing for a return to, well, what is good for you and what is bad for you? Follow thinkchristian.net and you'll find out. Right. We're just saying, if you're going to be swimming in these waters, let's think about it at least mm. and apply some of our theology and our beliefs to, again, not say whether it's good or bad, but just to say, okay, we've heard this person from the culture share their experience and uh, what they think of the world. And now that we've listened we can help it inform how we think about the world. We can see how our Christian faith maybe has a better answer. And here's the next step. Once we've been listeners, it allows us a voice in that larger cultural conversation. So we're no longer just condemning. We're participators yeah. in culture. We're cultivators. And so we've earned a seat at the table and we can say, hey, that's interesting that um, you know, you're so angry about God that a movie like Fight Club really resonates with you. Here's what we here's how we see um, where that anger fits in God's larger narrative of uh, creation, fall, redemption, restoration, and we can offer that into the conversation. Wow, yeah, that's really cool, man. And and so as I'm as I'm listening to this, um, my mind is going towards, for example, uh, uh, the whole idea. I think that's that's deeper. Uh, you know, Solomon, for example, the wisest man that ever, ever lived, this whole idea of culture and, and, and embracing culture and different, you know, even, even, uh, you know, finding truth in, in, in places where it uh, doesn't have to come out of the Bible. Solomon, when he compiled his Proverbs, Chronicles tells us that he wrote Proverbs, but that he also compiled them mm. and gathered them. And so, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is they're reading Proverbs, and some of those are Sumerian Proverbs. We're, we're talking like pagan Proverbs, mm-hmm. and they're reading them as their Bible. And because Solomon knew wisdom and truth and compiled, and I think being able to take that broad view of culture to say, well, there's wisdom. You know, it doesn't matter what this guy believes in his life. Sure. He's just expressed a truth in the universe and, and I love that. For me, that was very freeing. And again, it came out of being a missionary in another, in another culture. So you mentioned a few films. I'll, I'll just give a quick, uh, and then I want to hear some, some ways that this has really helped your conversations with unchurched people. Because I know our, our, our church planners are swimming in that, you know, as well as, you know, swimming in culture. They're also swimming in, in just you know, being surrounded by people that are unchurched, which makes you sure. kind of a unique type of minister, which makes what you're saying so helpful. And and so, like for me, when I was in Wales, um, like I said, uh, uh, films became, you know, my greatest allies. You know, they became portals into people's hearts and thoughts and conversations about God. But I could remember when I started noticing these themes coming out in um, – in, in, in certain films, like uh, what was the one with uh, Will Smith where 
gosh, I'm blanking out. Of course, I do this on my podcast, right? Um, <laughs> the, the one where, you know, all the zombies and the mutants. Oh, I Am Legend? I Am Legend. Yeah, yeah and I've yeah. even read that book. So, I mean, okay. it's totally different. But, uh, you know, so I Am Legend. Um, in that book, he, I mean, in the movie, he, um, it starts off, the very first scene says, God is not abandoned. And there's a picture of a, of a butterfly on this. Uh, and then later on, they bring in, teacher says, when you see a butterfly, you know, it's a sign that, uh, God loves us. And, you know, you go on and at the end, he's, he's going to sacrifice himself. And the, 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 the antidote is in the blood. And he's like, I can save you. And he's screaming out and they're trying to kill him. And he's this Messiah figure and he gives us life. I'm watching that thing. Mind blown. Like God has been in this entire movie. And I bet, you know, the average person hasn't picked up on it, but you better believe I rode that thing. to town. <laughs> and, and one of the coolest things we ever did, because we, we accidentally started a church. Uh, my story, Josh, is I, you know, I got into church plan on accident. I started a church around the Da Vinci Code uh, reading group with about 50 unchurched people. Really? Yeah. And, and it just became a church plant. You know, people are like, let's keep doing this. And I didn't want to, I was mad at God. I was like, nah, I, you know, I quit ministry. Ministry sucks. Church hmm. sucks. You know, I, I hate God's people, man. They, they're mean. And, uh, and, and it turned out that, uh, that became a church plant. Well, what was really cool was one of the things, cause we kept doing this ministry in public spaces and how do we connect with people? We knew that it wasn't just a reading group in a Starbucks. One of the things we did is we started a film club. Okay. And, and the film club was exactly, we, everybody that was part of that film club got to pick the movie. So you got your turn. You know, it wasn't like the Christian guy picked the movie. Right, right. It was, it was amazing to us, Josh, how much we would just see God coming, you know, breaking uh, almost any conversation. It wasn't like, so I was watching... Uh, it's a wonderful life. You know, it is a wonderful life, brother, especially with Jesus. It wasn't corny. It wasn't forced. Right, right. It was, you know, it just like you're talking about these themes and this idea. Of, I've never thought about it the way that you're putting it. I'm, I'm really can't wait to read the book. To well, I appreciate it. that. Yeah, I think we, you know, we do ha- have to be careful. You're, you're right. It's a challenge we have at Think Christian where we write not only about movies, but, you know, politics and science and all sorts of things is not to try to force the theology onto the topic or in this case, you know, it's something I really struggled with in the book. Am I, cause I'm dealing with secular films here. Am I, am I forcing this on a text where it doesn't belong? So um, I know that I've done that before, especially when I first started writing explicitly about faith in film. And I hope I've gotten a little bit better at it, but some people might, you know, read portions of the book and say, eh, you're kind of, you're kind of pushing it on this one. So it's, it's a real challenge. It's something we always have to be mindful of. And I do think taking the, you know, the art first again, and, and starting with the, the song itself or the television show itself or the movie itself. And, and rather than starting with our theology is a good way to hopefully avoid that. Yeah. And I, you know, like I said, reading your blog, I think you do. And uh, again, guys, that's thinkchristian.com. And uh, if you guys want to order the book, um, you can get it on Amazon. It is uh, on, I believe it's available for pre-order at this point. Yep. You can get it. You can pre-order it at least. So you can find it. I found it on amazon.com and it's movies or prayers by Josh Larson. How films, films, voice our deepest longings. It's from IVP. And like we said, it drops on June 5th, 2017. So um, Josh, it has been fantastic um, having you on here. It, I have one more question for you, but before that, is there anything you'd like to say to, to sum up or anything you're thinking, man, I, I really got to say this before I get off? No, I think you you covered some great stuff with the questions. I really appreciate the opportunity. and. Um, I'll just mention it's thinkchristian.net. We weren't able to grab .com. So. Oh, like John Malkovich. <laughs> so go, yeah, <laughs> you got it. These days, you know, if you type in Think Christian, you'll find us. You don't have to worry about that too much, but just didn't want people going to the wrong place. And um, Well, yeah, I'm, I'm I, glad you said that. I'm glad I made that faux pas because um, I get it in my mailbox now. So that's, that's, that's awesome. yeah, that's the way most people do. We've really been able to reach new readers that way. You can sign up 
on our website to get the email and we put out about an, an article a day. So we'd love to meet new folks that way. And if anyone wants to connect with me, whether you use Twitter or Facebook or whatever, uh, Larson on Film, L-A-R-S-E-N is the handle where you can usually find me. And your podcast again was? That is Film Spotting. And wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find us there. All right. Well, Josh, we always ask one last question. Um, we <laughs> typically have a co-host, but uh, that he asks this question. And is, is this going to be who I'm going to punch or who I'm going to wrestle or something? How do you know? Well, no. I listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to see who you paired me up with. Well, today, you know, like it's different because we can't put you against a preacher because you're just automatically cooler than them. I don't know about that. You so we today. I got a pitch. I'm looking at you. You know, I I I saw you when we came on, so I I sized you up a little bit. And uh, being that we have the Star Wars connection, if you and J.J. Abrams were to get into a physical fist fight, ooh, this is good. Um, I am going to. I guess if I channeled my disappointment at the lost finale and transform that into physical <laughs> anger, I might be able to take them. Out of sheer rage, the adrenaline rush alone would carry you. Possibly. Possibly. All right. All right. I dig it. Because, you know, he's not that big, right? I mean, he's... Uh, that, my impression is he's not. I'm not a huge guy myself, so it'd be kind of a nerd battle. But um, who knows? We'll, we would, who knows what would happen? Yeah. You know, I, I, my money's on you. I, 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 I think you got this. Appreciate so, that. All right, brother. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. And again, guys, pick up this book, pre-order it, and uh, check out all the other cool things that Josh is involved in. And with that, Arnold, sign this out. Remember, if you are called to church planting, go hardcore or go home. You've been listening to Hardcore Church Planting. Hardcore Church Planning has been brought to you by the Church Planner Podcast and the Church Planner Magazine, which is available in the App Store for both Apple and Android devices. If you like this episode, leave us a positive review. If you didn't like this episode, we'll be happy to give you your money back.